now. And I think we are live. What's up, everyone that's in the chat? I see uh, Dom is in here in the chat, and I'm assuming he's excited about this, being that this is the company that he works for also. And I've got, I think, a lot of catching up to do just in the Cloudinary space, but especially on the React Hook stuff. That sounds really cool, so I'm definitely going to check that out as well. And then I've got uh, Thomas Piroch. Uh, hopefully, it was that close enough? Did I get the... That the was SH sound, yeah. good. Uh, with me, who is uh, from Cloudinary as well. And usually Jeez. I give like a minute or two to give people a second to get in, but I think we've already waited a few. So if you want to go ahead and just give like a quick introduction to yourself um, and what you do, and we'll just go ahead and dive on in. Sure. So first of all, you know, thank you for, for the invitation. It's great to be here. Um, so yeah, my name is Tomas. I work as a developer evangelist uh, for Cloudinary. And, you know, as part of my daily job, I produce a lot of content that's related to media and web performance and anything related to web technology, especially from a, a media angle, so images and videos. Um, I also run a training business, which is called Full Stack Training. And, you know, I'm just very excited to always learn a lot about, you know, the latest and greatest that the web has to offer. So I'm hoping that we'll have a you know, some very good discussions about what the web can do uh, today. I think there's like two things about that that are super exciting. One, just like being a DevRel is like just the coolest job by far in the world, especially <laughs> when we get to like work with each other and then learn from each other and like cross promote things. Like it just, it's just absolutely exactly. a ton of fun. Yeah. Um, and then also I just put the link in the chat for people that are interested. Uh, the, the full stack training that you mentioned um, has a lot of really good courses in here. So I'll put that link in there. And then also more specifically the jam stack dot training. Um, so Thomas, yep. I don't know if, if you know Let's what I've actually, that, yeah. Oh, missed it. That was jams. a dot com. So just jam stack dot training. There it is. Um, I actually, uh, went through the majority of, I think it's next and authentication, which happens to use all zero, which is really cool. Uh, so I'm like 70% done with that one, I think. Um, nice. Anyway, these are these are super super cool. So if people are interested in like other resources, especially ones that are free here, uh, you should definitely check this out. And I think the stuff that's covered in here is just kind of a, a test a testimonial to like all the exciting technologies that we have out there, including in this case specifically Cloudinary. Yeah. So Cloudinary is something like I've personally I've heard people like rave about Cloudinary for. I mean, at least a year, like West Boss and Scott Talinsky on Syntax, like they talk about it, blog posts and videos and conferences. I see Cloudinary everywhere. I have a, a pretty decent high level understanding of what it is. I've just never actually really used it. And that's why bringing you on today is so exciting because we're going to do some hands-on stuff. So for people that just may not be aware of what Cloudinary is as a whole, do you want to give like a, a 30 second, one minute overview of, of what Cloudinary is? Absolutely, or at least I can try, but do stop me <laughs> if, if I go over 30 seconds. Um, take as, take so, as much time as you need. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you know, people will see what, what Cloudinary does uh, anyway. Um, and I think I always believe in, you know, it's better to learn by using something as opposed yeah. to me just, you know, talking about theoretical stuff here. So what Cloudinary does is, you know, it's a cloud-based media asset management solution. Um, so even though that's a mouthful, Think about it this way you have you know lots of images you may have some videos that you want to use on your site and you can upload and store all of your media assets in cloudinary so now you have two options you either just can use cloudinary as a sort of digital asset management solution whereby you know you're showing it on your screen now you have a media library that's where you have all your images you can now categorize them put them in folders analyze them search you know do whatever you want with them um you know auto tag them, manually add text to it, whatever. Um, the other thing is, of course, we help you with delivery as well. So all the images that you and the videos that you upload to us will be given a unique URL. And then once you call that URL, the, the image itself will be available in a global CDN, right? So that does help with a faster delivery of these, of these assets. Yeah. And we're going to see you know, what other things we do with images, which are very, very cool. So you can, you know, generate profile images, you can, you know, find faces, 
you can reduce the quality of the image you can you know enhance the image you can do a lot just by using the apis or just just by manipulating the url i think a lot of a lot of what you said comes back to performance in a couple of different ways one is like everyone has images on their site somewhere, right? So your site loading as fast as possible is a really hot topic, I think, in the community, making sure that, um, I don't know, your site performs well, right? When people load it, and especially with images, because those can get quite big. And part of that is like, there's some optimization stuff um, that Cloudinary can do that is just way, like everything that it can do is way beyond me, but some of the basic stuff I at least <laughs> understand. But you mentioned CDN, which is a content delivery network, which basically means like you take an asset and you upload it to Cloudinary. And then Cloudinary uploads that asset basically across the world in different data centers and regions. So someone in Japan or whatever requests that image, they will get it from whatever data center is closest to them. I don't know where that data center is, but it's a different data center than the one that I would hit when I request the image here in the States. Uh, so that's part of that speed process. There's optimization images, but there's also like this replication stuff of being a CDN. And that gets into something I talk about a lot as well as static sites. Static sites have the ability to do the same thing. You host them in Netlify. Netlify replicates that site across the world. So it's as quick as possible for people when they try to request it. Yeah. So we can start with a really quick test just, just yeah. to, you know, get people in the mood of, you know, how, Cloudinary <laughs> is amazing. Uh, so why don't we take one of your images? So take that one where you're presenting. Yep. Um, and if you just click on the um, uh, the little chain icon. Chain right here. Uh, the URL. Yeah, that copies the URL. And okay. if you open a new tab. And then if you could also open the uh, dev tools for me. And yeah, let me see if I can. Can I get rid of this taskbar up here? I didn't mean to zoom in. All right. I think that went away. So you want to see the... Uh, the dev tools dev and then tools. go to network yep and select uh doc from the filter okay and then just do a refresh refreshing yep and then so what we have now is oh, i'm sorry uh media i didn't i, I don't know why i said doc uh, it's media oh then, then do i need refresh. to refresh again <laughs> do you have some other let's just do all <laughs> what I'm trying to it's see in is here somewhere. The, the yeah the image itself, which is uh, what is it called? It's called me presenting. presenting. Yeah, is it this one right here? Uh, the, why did it show up as a three o four? Is that a, is that like a cached thing? Uh yes. Oh, do, can you disable cache? Um, uh, in the, um, uh, there's a checkbox. Oh, up here. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Now and, refresh. And Again, and now look at, uh, where is the me presenting here? All right, so that one came back with a 200, no cash. Correct, okay, so if you take a look at the content type, that's, you know, that comes back as an image JPEG, so that's in the response headers, if you scroll down just a little bit. So content type, image JPEG. Image JPEG, so, and it's 207, so 20, 47, 28, so that's about, what, two megabytes-ish, I think? Which one? I'm going to let... Uh, the the uh, content length. Content length. Oh, um, I'm not going to do that math right off hand, but I just... Um, it, it, <laughs> it, if, you, if you close this window, uh, so if you, if you close the... Uh, close the console? The, yeah, and if you reopen it again... All right. There should be... If you go back to the network tab... Network. I need to do the refresh again. <laughs> But this if you find here. the... Oh, I think I just saw it close. Yeah, so this thing is what you're that. saying. And then now we get 208 kb. Okay, so it's, so it's, yeah, it's not 2 megabytes. It's gotcha. 208 kilobytes, right? Yep. So, so think about it this way, right? So this image is in fact a very large image because the dimensions of the image, you can see that if you hover over your mouse over the, the, uh, the actual tab in, in Chrome. Under, uh, the, oh, over this one right the, here. Yeah. And then it should tell you that this is you know, oh. 2048 by 1367, cool. right? I so, didn't know you could do that hover, by the way. It's just, you know, it's Chrome. The small, the small <laughs> things in life. Anything in <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, so what, you know, what people usually do is, first of all, you know, they say, okay, this is my image. And now let's imagine it's not on cloud and it's on your file system. So, mm -hmm. they, so they bring it into the browser and then they put it into an image tag. 
and then they you know add some CSS to it, so they reduce the image to be like what 600 by something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now the problem it's it's good, but there's a problem, <laughs> right? You, you still bring in an image that is originally 2,400 yep. uh, uh, 2,048 uh, pixels in size, and it's about 208 kilobytes, right? So that's yep. it's you know you, you shouldn't do that. Now what Cloudinger allows you to do is if you change the URL parameters here. So if you just add uh, after that V, th you can actually replace that V thing um, completely if you want. There's just this um, one. Yeah, it's for a uh, uh, CDN caching, but it's fine. Okay. Uh, if you just do a W underscore and say uh, 600. 600. Yep. So this is now, and just hit enter. So this is now going to generate a, an image with a width of 600 on the server side and it's going to send that to you. So now we should see that the size has been reduced. Yep. So uh, it looks like, not... oh, go ahead. Oh yeah. So yeah, there's 31. Oh, you have preserved log. That's why you have the, uh, I got confused why it appears twice. Which one? Oh, right here. Yeah. Sometimes I turn it on. Sometimes I forget to turn it back off. Yeah. Um, but now so... at least we can see that in the first time around it was, you know, 208 kilobytes yep. and now it's only 33, right? So we reduced the size of the file yep. significantly. Okay. Now two more things and then we can do something more exciting, <laughs> but, um, you know, this is already a win. This is already yep. good. It's, it's much better to load an image that's 33 kilobytes in size as opposed to 208. And, you know, when you load an image that's by default two megabytes, you know, like, a, a I don't know, a 4k type image, Yep. Um, you know, you you need to reduce the size, and you can't <laughs> do that in CSS. And I've um, got, and the other if thing we, that if we need one, I've got a an even bigger image. I can throw it like a 4K image. We can throw in, but we can save that for later. Okay. Um, and the other thing is that you know, if you know something about images, you know that there are different image formats. So there would be you know obviously JPEG, but there's also WebP, there's PNG, there's JPEG 2000, and all these different image formats. And so you know, Google created WebP and they said, you know, if you use Chrome, you should load WebP images because we can parse those. It's even, you know, it has a better compression algorithm and, and it just works better. Um, but then you try to load a WebP image in Safari, that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, Safari doesn't understand the dot WebP extension. And so in Cloud, you know, we have a feature where we say, we're going to check the browser that you use to access the image and if it's Chrome, we're actually going to serve your WebP. If it's Safari, we're going to serve you the most appropriate image format for Safari, which could be JPEG or JPEG 2000. Okay. And we do that automatically. So you don't need to, you know, at build time <laughs> or ahead of time, generate, you know, five or six images yep. and then figure out the logic to serve that to the right browser. Um, so what you can do is after the, the width 600, you can just put a comma and then add F underscore auto, which is automatic format. I just hit enter. Okay. And this is before I do just, I knew, I knew you could do like transformations. I think is the general term here in the URL. I kind of yes. originally thought they would have been like query parameters, but it looks like these are just kind of like comma separated values, which is interesting. Um, but the yeah. longer implication of this is there's tons of these different things that you can specify in this URL and Cloudinary just knows how to parse that and then respond back appropriately. Exactly. So now obviously we're using, you know, URL manipulation, but if you, you know, I don't know, a React developer, a Node developer, a PHP developer, we, you can use any of our APIs and generate an image programmatically that has a width of 600 that does automatic formats mm -hmm. and does other things, right? So yep. this is just the easiest way to to demo sort of show what yeah. we do exactly. Sweet. Um, so if you now hit enter, so we were, you know, at 33 kilobytes now. So now we are down to just 20. Sweet. And this is because if you open the header details, if you click that, Got a request. Um, and if you check the content type response header, content type it now comes back as a WebP, right? Sweet. Now, if you take this URL, uh, and if you have Safari, you can just take the same URL, you know, paste it in Safari, and open I like up that tool never in use Safari. Safari. <laughs> I always use it. I know <laughs> I, I, okay. I said that out. Yeah, it's recorded and it's live. <laughs> um, um, I don't even. Um, how do I get to my <laughs> inspect oh, tools? You don't have the. Um, do you have the develop? 
uh, menu item. So where you see Safari file, view history, do you see something that says develop? Oh, you don't even, oh, you don't have that enabled. Yeah. Uh, you I... need to go into preferences, I think. Uh, yeah. And then, wait, let me, <laughs> wait, I don't even know how to, because I, I set this up before and I don't know how to do that. Um, I'm curious, anybody else in the chat using Safari or, you know, like I kind of <laughs> thought like Chrome was just the default for everybody, but apparently like Firefox also got, I think, really popular with their grid tool. So a lot of people jumped to, um, to Firefox for that specifically. Um, so I'm curious if anybody else is what people's defaults are. Mickey the Great says Chrome. Anybody else? I've just always, or for years, I've just used Chrome and never, never really thought about anything else. Okay, so it says you need to go to Safari settings, so that's settings, and then you go advanced. Uh, I think it's in the, uh, okay, and on advanced, you have show develop menu in the, uh, okay. yeah, the last one. That one. Okay, now you close that, and now you should have a develop menu bar. Oh, uh, okay, right here. Yeah, there and that should have an option that says open show, show web inspector that's, okay. that's the one <laughs> we right. made it yeah so now <laughs> now you have the network network pane and then if you click you see you already see the type yep coming it's back JPEG is jpeg 2000 yep so it's, it's actually jp2 which is jpeg 2000 so that's yet another image format but then cloud you knew that now you use safari so that is the best image format to serve for this browser and question about that. So I, I legitimately don't know the answer. Is there, there's just a piece of metadata in like the header that tells you what kind of browser it's coming from? Is that? Um, it's, I was actually looking into this today. Um, it's a mix of user agents and accept, head, uh, accept headers. Okay. So, so basically there's some, I think fairly complex logic happening at the Cloudinary side to, to figure things out. Um, okay. But yeah, it's, it's, it's just a mix. Okay. Um, and then the last option that I, I just want to, you know, show you is, um, is Q underscore auto. So a lot of images, you know, contain, you know, pixels and stuff that can be removed without affecting the quality of the image. So what Q auto does, it's automatically removes the quality of the image without affecting the human eye. So if you hit enter, the quality of the image is going to still be the same. So there shouldn't be a, um, a you know, a, a notable difference, but then the size is again going to go down. So okay. we are at and 20 and a half. Yeah, that's why I was pulling that up, 20 and a half. And then uh, with Q Auto, we come back and 20.4, still lower. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is lower. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, of course, it depends on the image as well, right? right. So what's great about Q Auto is so if you use tools like, uh, I don't know, the Sharp Library, or even Photoshop, you know, there's a slider to sort of reduce the quality of the image. Okay. But if, if you have, let's say, 100 images and you say, okay, I want to do quality 70 for all my JPEGs, that's good. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that. It's, it's a good start for like optimizing your images. But what you need to remember is that every single image is going to be different. And therefore, you can't apply the same quality reduction to all of your images. Okay. Or some image, maybe a quality 70 is going to be already, you know, pixelated and bad. And for some, maybe you can go down as low as quality 30, for example, right? Now, what Kyoto does, it first analyzes the image. It knows what's in there and then reduces the quality based on the actual content of the image. So, like, that would be, I don't know if this is the right time to get into, like, that specific logic, but... Does it look for, like, duplicate pixels and then somehow just, like, represent that pixel and where it's located in a... I tell you I why know. you shouldn't get into this topic because <laughs> I don't know. Either. Yeah. I, I honestly don't know. And that's, um, that's just out of like my curiosity. And it's the same thing for like at Auth0, we don't necessarily talk about every detail of like authentic authentication and authorization and like the, the really deep details because those are really not necessary from a user perspective. So this is just totally out of curiosity. But yeah, um, I, I, I don't know. I recently started to look into... Uh, image formats and I started to read things like the PNG spec and some other things. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Sweet. I'm good with that. Um, 
And really quickly, just a few people, uh, I think new, at least that I don't recognize in the chat, uh, Always News, um, Relish Drove, Rose, Apple Media, and Work Eggs, maybe. Um, people that are new in the stream, let me know in the chat. Or if you just want to, anybody has anything to shout out or introduce themselves or say something you're interested in, uh, go ahead and throw it in the chat while we're talking. And especially if you have any questions, make sure you throw those in there as well. And we'll try to address them as we go along. All right. Um, sweet. So, so is that all the like URL transformations you wanted to do? So let me add a few more and then just, okay. you know, we can, we can then carry on. So let's, let's change with 600 to be, um, uh, let's go with like 300. All right. And, and I also wonder, add, can I make, how do I make, is there any way to make that bar bigger in Chrome? Uh, the bar being, oh, the, the address bar. bar. Yeah. No. I'm not sure. Okay. Anyway, hopefully it's not too bad. I, I, yeah. Um, also at the height, 300. So that would be, you know, H underscore 300. Um, right. And then, so this is obviously going to, you know, squash the image, which is fine. Yeah. But what we're going to do is now we're hopefully going to be finding your face and then do a crop around it. So Sweet. fingers crossed that's going to work. So let's do uh, a comma C underscore uh, thumb, as in short for thumbnail. Thumbnail. And, and then, what's the C yeah, stand for? A uh, crop. Crop. So you okay. have various crop options: crop, gotcha. you know, fit, fill, uh, scale, etc. Uh, and then also do a G underscore so comma uh, G underscore face. So which G... is so G is gravity. So you can actually specify whether the crop should be to the north of the image or to the south. Okay. And, and in this if case, you say face, it's going to find a face. And hopefully, I think yours is not blurry. All the others are. So hopefully, this is going to find that. So if you hit enter. They say I've got a good face, a, so I imagine this will work. <laughs> I, it's all AI, so let's see. Yay. Nice. So this is this so, is multiple things. So we get a 300 by 300, and then it did its crop. but by specifying the gravity of face, it now cropped specifically on, obviously I made my face, which looks like it picked it up pretty well. Yeah. And then if you do an R underscore max, which is radius max, it's just going to generate you a really nice profile picture. So R max and- Yeah, so R is, you know, you either put in a radius value or if you put max, it's just going to take the maximum, which is a circle. Okay. And run and that then again. just hit enter. And there you Sweet. go, there's your profile image, there's my, which is yeah. then 11 kilobytes in size. Oh, true. Yeah, because we, I don't know if any of the other pieces had implications, but now it's obviously smaller, right? The 300 by 300. So that's definitely yeah. part of it. Or probably Actually, the, the radius does add to the size. It adds about, you know, no five kilobytes or a kilobyte. Okay. Just because of, you know, that's extra calculation that the we need to put in the image itself. But I think that's still really good. Cool. And this is the kind of thing I was actually just looking at. Um, oh, uses dot tech. I'm working on just a demo that's similar to this. If you haven't seen it from West Boss, um, and so like these the images are so small. Like that's the kind of thing that uh, that specific scenario that you just walked me through could be used for this same thing. Right? Like people could exactly. upload an image, and then we could really uh, optimize them in terms of file size, and then also do an auto crop. So even if they aren't centered in their image, as long as their face is clear, ideally it'll kind of crop it the same way that, that ours just did. Correct. Yeah. Sweet. Um, one comment in the chat, ID zine for you from Texas. What's up? What part of Texas are you in? A couple of the people that have been in the chat recently are from Austin. And uh, as we get into some more Cloudinary stuff, I'm curious how many people outside of Dom have used uh, Cloudinary before. If you have or, or have any other similar tools, uh, let me know. Just kind of curious about that. San Antonio, very cool. I've been there one time. All right. So, well, here, I don't know, Thomas, if you want to take uh take a stab at the first question how does it handle products for e-commerce i assume the idea is like it doesn't matter what pla what type of site it's for it's still just images so you do the same type of thing but Correct. obviously really Correct. useful um, in e-commerce 
it, it's particularly useful in e-commerce for, for multiple reasons. So first of all, Cloudinary has a lot of extra features that are actually geared towards e-commerce. Um, because obviously, if you think about you know e-commerce e solutions, that's where you have a lot of uh, images, videos, 360 degree stuff. Um, and yeah, so there's there's a thing called the, the color mapping. Um, if you look for the, uh, there was a blog post that I wrote. So if you just maybe Google for blog, then my name, and then Cloudin and color replace <laughs> all these things together. <laughs> and hopefully, um, I did some good SEO. So, and this is one. okay. This is on the, yeah, this is the one we talked about the other day that actually is what I was looking yeah. for. So, there's an actual demo in here. So, we're going to assume that we have this, you know, this uh, image of, of this model wearing this, uh, this jumper. And then, so Cloudinary has this feature which is called color replace, where you can specify the color that you want to replace and then the color that you want to replace with. And then the third parameter is like a sort of like a, um, how aggressive it should, uh, you know, do the replacement. So what that allows you to do is to take this base image, and if you scroll down a little bit, you can just replace that orange with, with any other color, right? So that means, from an e-commerce perspective, it pretty much means that, you know, you have a product. Now you don't need to take, I don't know, a bazillion pictures of of the same product with the model varying it, you know, different color combinations, but you can just do a replacement. And so if you scroll to the bottom of this article, I actually created a, a quick demo where uh, I think it's a- um, This is a panel. React component? That's a React Inside component. Okay. So yeah, this, this demo uh, uses React. And I just created another component where you have a list of colors. And it uses a fact and you know, all the good React stuff. <laughs> Oh, sweet. Okay, here it is. So right. Then... So you have, so you then, yeah, you can just click any color and going to replace it. And if you open this in the sandbox, you can actually, uh, if you go to what is the component called? Um, I think it's called like a color something component. Let's see if it all. There we go. Uh, oh, there color we go. select color select, and mm -hmm. then if you just add uh, you know, new objects with the name and the hex value, uh, you know, whatever you want. I just want to see people, see people or show people that it actually, you know, uh, works. And, and just need to put zero, in uh, zero. zeros. I guess I could do yeah. three of them there too. Okay, so that live reloaded yeah. and then. And then now you click that. This is not rehearsed by the way, for people that are watching. So now. Yeah. Uh, that does a really good job. It with black. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And you can see, we talked about this before, like there's a tiny, tiny bit of the color left over. Um, I mean, this is a pretty, pretty tough thing to do. Uh, but to get it, like when you just look at that product from here, I mean, that looks great. And this is like, otherwise I've always wondered how like e-commerce people do this because you have to not only like have the people dress up in the different colors, but you also have to have them in like the exact same position, ideally, which is <laughs> yeah, gotta exactly, be really exactly. tiresome. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so also, you know, we have a, you know, a, a library, which is called a product gallery um, where, so I mentioned tagging of your assets, right? So you can say, I have, you know, a bunch of images about shoes. They are all tagged as a shoe. And then you can now specify, you can build a product gallery based on that tag. And then mm -hmm. how it looks like is if you scroll down, if we just, you know, show you all the images oh, cool. that you have, you have, we support 360 degree uh, images. So you can actually, you know, oh. spin them around. And so e-commerce is, is a really important uh, thing at Cloudinary as well, right? So it's, we have a lot of features that you can use uh, with e-commerce. I guess that's the uh, short answer. Yeah. <laughs> And that's I guess, I mean, question. that's got to be like one of your target. Like, it feels like such a time and performance saver, especially in the e-commerce sector. That's got to be like a huge part of your business, I would imagine. Yeah. And Super then, you cool. know, what with this product gallery, it's uh, customizable. So, you know, everything you see are colors and where the images appear and how the thumbnails appear. It's all customizable via, you know, JavaScript. Yeah, it looks like pulling a script add a container and then yeah i could go in and add whatever styles i want to on my own 
yeah and then you can also if you scroll a little bit down you see there's a, a gallery widget method which then accepts a bunch of parameters mm. um, i think this is the most basic setup that you see here so you know what is the container that you want to use what's your cloud name and then what are the tags of the images that you want to put in the uh, the product gallery but then on the right side you see there's customizing styles caruso options responsive widget you know you can listen for gallery events so you can just you know customize the the hell out of this if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it's all like i think products to get to keep people interested is like one you ought to be able to do something pretty quickly and it looks like that's exactly what this is but then two I think the next step that a lot of places miss is just like, what do you do next? And so this seems really easy and it's showing you like the different things that you can customize and do yourself. So I love that. I love that it has those two aspects. It gets you started really quickly, but that also gives you this like infinite world with a little bit of guidance of how you can just use your creativity and do whatever it is you want. Yeah. Uh, a couple of comments in the chat. Uh, Chris Salton Burnham is in the chat. What's up, Chris? Um, Mickey the Great said, great for user-generated content. Uh, fetch images of people wearing your product and use a designated hashtag and display it on the product page. I don't know if we'll get there this time in the stream, but that's something I'm actually really interested in is like, that would be really cool for, as a demo. And actually, I might tie this into one of my existing demos of like, if people tweet, maybe I can tweet an image with a certain hashtag. I can grab that image, overlay the hashtag that um, I'm talking about in that demo and then have that be posted somewhere or shown somewhere. I think that would be wildly cool. Um, yeah. And then I'm not really sure what the, the ID zine says, looking to see some info on the add-on OpSwat. Impressive, or is that, I'm not sure what OpSwat is in that case. So maybe yeah, if I, you I can. I don't know OpSwat either. I know, I know SWAT, but that's something else. Okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, I don't know maybe a clarification on that um, would be useful. Um, then we got a link in here for slow fashion. Uh, looks like probably e-commerce site here too. Is that, I don't know if this is a demo. It looks really good. I assume this is a real one. Um, um, it's hashtag cloud in refresher. So I think so. Ah, okay. It's very embarrassing that I didn't actually see this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so yeah, and, and Mickey is one of my colleagues. Um, oh, cool. So, okay. Yeah, that's why he shared this demo. Um, gotcha. It looks I, badass, by the way. I, I'm now embarrassing myself and Mickey at the same time. <laughs> great. Um, yeah, I think this is, if I remember correctly, this was a page that we purposefully built just to show all the clouding features that are related to e-commerce. Yep. Um, so you see videos, you know, those are background videos. We have the same F auto thing for videos. So you look at Chrome, it's going to send you a web M. If you mm -hmm. look in Safari, it's going to send you an MP4 or whatever the best, you know, video format is for, for, um, for Safari is. And we, I think you showed me something the other day, like Cloudinary has something specific for video that's similar to like an image face cropping. But in this case, like these videos, it doesn't look like it's specifically using yeah. it, but I think it's for an effect, but like, as the lady is walking, you could potentially like just crop the video like real time on her head or on an object if you wanted to, right? And it would just follow her along Correct. and make sure she stays in the cropped view of the video. So actually we have we have that uh, demo. It's actually a lady walking. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you just Google for object aware video cropping, I think that's the one. Um, yeah, I remember when you showed me this the other day, that was just like, wow. Yeah, that, that was my, actually, no, that's object of a cropping is, is not that. It's actually, that's a, another cool feature, which we can <laughs> take a look at. But um, it, it's basically, imagine a, a picture of a, a kitchen, and you say, I want to crop on the microwave. I want to crop on the fridge. Mm. And now we have these features. That's dope. So you can actually <laughs> specify G auto sync, G auto micro, and then it recognizes the object and does the crop. Um, Mickey has the rights. No, that's not the. Maybe Mickey can help me. Uh, I know that there's a video of uh, a very beautiful lady walking in the red, you know, clothes and and cloud and you follow uh, the. You know, we follow the the, uh, the focus in the video uh, when we crop. And I wonder if. So I remember we talked about this the other day too. I don't know if I saved the URL. Oh, here it is. I think. Um, it, okay. I've got it. And then um, it looks like what. Um, ID Zine was talking about, which I'm, this is hey beyond everybody. me. Hey um, I'm Sam Brace. But the malware oh, protection for images. 
Okay. Um, if you go back to my blog, which is, uh, you have that open with a custom color replace component. I think this is oh, a transformation this is right... video. This is, no, that's not the one. Oh, right. Um, okay. Oh, that's fine. This is, you know, if people, you know, wonder how we calculate transformations with regards to the pricing, they can take a look at that video and, you know, they can see what they pay for when it comes to transformations. We have a credit based system for pricing 25 credits per month. And then each credit could be used for something, you know, thousand transformations, gigabyte of disk storage, etc. And that was, that was something I did want to bring up. Um, cause I think this is, it's a kind of a unique idea of the, the credits. And so like you're saying with the free tier, you get 25 credits. And those credits equate to different things. So if you go down to the how I calculate credits down here, um, you can see a couple of examples. So one credit could be used for a thousand transformations. And one of the things that I was really worried about uh, potentially with this is that like, if I have an image and I'm using it in a website and it does a transformation, it uses one of those like transformation URLs, it's doing the transformation. And then if, if a thousand people use the site in different places, I was like, well, that that's going to scale up really quickly. But you had a clarification that like, after you do one transformation, it caches that image. So it's not actually transforming. And again, it's just going and grabbing that thing. Yeah. So that would be against your viewing bandwidth of which you get mm -hmm. a gig per credit per month. So and, then basically, yep. So, so if you think about it, you know, 1000 transformations, one gigabyte of storage and one gigabyte of monthly viewing bandwidth, that's a lot. And that's three credits out of the 25 right. that you have. Yep. This so, is a, it's a pr much more powerful story than I understood. So I'm glad that one, we talked about it the other day. And then I'm glad now that you get to share with the people on the stream who uh, are just kind of curious how it works as well. Yeah. And there was one, I don't know if it was still on here somewhere i saw where you can get like extra credits i was poking around this morning and you can get extra credits as far as i know if you do so if you it's in your media library i think all right uh, so me... when you log in and you say or maybe it's on the dashboard um do i need to worry about i think all the secret stuff is it's it's it's, it's hidden so api oh, here is it is fine. um yeah, so if you you know tweet and, and share something on Twitter and I think Facebook or something, then you get some extra uh, credits. Let's see if uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. All right, I've at least I've at least got a tweet out there, and then like I don't know, I'm assuming these are just kind of like maybe for one month or just like extra in general. Like they don't you don't get those every month. I would imagine that's a lot if you do. I don't know okay <laughs> that's the honest i would assume it's a while but, okay um i, I would think so too that. yeah sweet so right now i am at 0 0.08 percent and i have I've basically not done anything yet except for add a couple of images <laughs> but um yeah i think that i'm really glad that you were able to clarify again the pricing thing so that people understand that this is a pretty pretty powerful free tier yeah um so for that video example so if you go back to my blog um uh, you have that is this the full stack training blog? Uh, you, you already have yeah you already have that open um is the fourth right tab is yeah okay you just go back to the top and you hit articles Articles. then there should be react videos and the orientation api so the orientation api is one of the newest web apis which basically tells you how your screen is oriented, you know, portrait mode or um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, landscape. landscape mode. Yeah. So what happens is, so this is the example of the ship, right? So you, you play that video, that's really nice. But what if you want to like, you know, crop this video down to be smaller, then you may lose the focus of the, of the, the ship as well, mm -hmm. right? Because then, you know, even in the start of the video, you now see that it's not really showing the ship it waits for it's basically showing the middle of the video yep. right it's not the video gets excited from this point <laughs> and then yeah but before that it's so just completely do, boring <laughs> it was yeah it was just a scene <laughs> um and so with this g auto feature what you do is you actually tell cloud to look for the most interesting frames in a video and do the crop around that. And 
you know, it's even more visual when you when we take a look at the other example, which is uh, if you scroll down a little bit more, which is with this, you know, with the dog. So this is the original video where there's a frisbee and then the dog catches that. What a badass then, catch, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's a brilliant video, right? And then you say, okay, I want to crop this to 400 by 800, and then this is what you get. You nothing, see nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, there's yeah. a frisbee, and then and then there's that, a dog, and there's a dog, right? So now, just by adding a G auto, like an automatic gravity, it's going to crop the video this way. So that it's, it's you know the action is always going to be in the focus. And that's so wild. Like I can't even imagine how much goes into that because it's it it's not it's, it's not it's, like you're finding like one frames, frame. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. For every frame, you're like continuing to calculate what the most interesting part is. So I can't even yeah. imagine like what the behind the scenes of actually calculating that and having that be super optimized is, but that's crazy cool. And so, yeah, so the point of this article was, you know, how do you, you know, you can actually listen for the, uh, I, I create a React component again, that basically uh, checks the orient with, the, with the orientation API, it checks whether you have a portrait mode or landscape mode, and then it does the video crop based on that, just by, you know, manipulating the geo tool stuff. Uh, I think I have a, a demo on the very bottom of this page. And I'll link this. Um, right, right there, so I'm using cool. Chrome because, you know, with, with Chrome, <laughs> you can actually change the orientation um, okay. uh, of your screen. And so I stop and then I, you know, change it. And then, you know, someone is looking at the mobile and then that is the video that gets And now you now. see, yeah. Wow, that's right, so, so cool. So now you get the cropped version so that, you know, the because sometimes when you record something in a landscape mode, and then you flip your phone around, you get these weird dimensions, right? Yep. You, you know, it doesn't fit or you know, it gets cropped in a weird way. So this is trying to solve that, uh, that issue. Super cool. And I posted, for anybody that's curious, wants to grab that or go read up more on that, I'll post a link in the chat. And then uh, some positive feedback on the Cloudinary side. ID Zine says, very impressive uh, tier. I really love this app. Um, so positive feedback there on Cloudinary overall, which is great. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna close out a few of the extra tabs that we've gone through. And thanks uh, thanks to Mickey also for throwing in some resources and things as we're going along. Cool, so um, going a couple of things we talked about in our notes of doing is one, just kind of showing uh, showing the upload. And I forget, what's the what's the phrasing on like the, the kind of really easy to get started uploader with Cloudinary? Oh, the um, upload widget, I think. Upload widget. Yep. And you know, it's funny when I ran this earlier just to see how it worked or just based on the screenshot, I realized that uh, I write articles for scotch.io and when I write articles, this is what the image like selector looks like. And I was like, wait, that looks super familiar. So they're using Cloudinary <laughs> behind the scenes too, which is cool. They do, yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, so I get like, I. I guess just going ahead and setting this up for me, I think would be really interesting. And I've, I've already installed the Cloudinary CLI and if people who just kind of want to see how to do that, there was a, a pip, um, which is like Python something, something. Uh, I, I think so. Uh, I think, I think it's like the package manager for Python. So anyway, I, I ran the pip three install of the Cloudinary CLI and then, um, in here, after you have that installed, then what I'll do in a second is run, what's the command? The CLD make and then upload widget. Mm -hmm. So I gonna get out of this. I'm in VS Code. A, a crazy cool extension uh, that you showed me before we started is the cloak extension yeah. by John Papa, which if I, I'm not even gonna test it just, <laughs> just in case. Uh, but if you accidentally open your .env file with environment variables, it will cloak those. It will hide them from people that are that are looking. So, yeah. So it's amazing for like you know streams or any sort of demos. People create video courses yeah. and produce YouTube videos. Yeah, you don't yeah. accidentally share your API secrets. And this was make and then upload, uh, upload widget. Widget. And then I guess so. Like I can just grab grab all this code out of here. Mm -hmm. And then That's what good. I'll do is I'll create an index HTML. So we'll just test this thing out. 
And then in VS Code, there's Emmet abbreviation for the boilerplate code for HTML file, which if you didn't know was one of the most amazing things in the world, because I couldn't tell you what all is in the head by myself. <laughs> And then I just pasted in all this information. And there's two things, I learned this earlier by testing out, that we will need to upload or update in here. Uh, but basically what this gives us is I'm going to uh, run this file with live server. If people haven't seen that extension, it's an extension of VS Code. And it basically like serves uh, static HTML files from uh, a server and it's at 5501. And then what I get is this upload files button and uh, starts off by saying access denied. And I think the first thing is after we pull in the script and we try to create the upload widget, there's two things we need to specify. One is the cloud name. And then the second is the upload preset, which I think we'll talk a little bit more um, detail wise in a second. Yeah. And uh, I had to poke around just to figure out exactly what the cloud name was. In this case, it's James Q quick. And that is is that just by default, like a username for myself? Or when you sign up, do you so choose what your, your cloud name is? So when you sign up, you get a, a randomized one. Okay. But I think as part of the sign up, or I'm pretty sure there's a notification that says, hey, your cloud name is, you know, ABC, XYZ, 345. Mm -hmm. You want to update this, and then you can put in a, you know, a, a username type value. Okay. And then if you ever want to find out what your cloud name is, if you if you go back to your cloud name console, when you log in, this is what you would see. So this is a dashboard. And then you see under account details, you have cloud name. And then that's the the value that essentially you put in now. Yep. And then, you know, if you didn't update it, then yes, it will say cloud name, you know, ABC, XYZ, one, two, three. Right. Or, or something. But there's a way to change that, of course, in the settings later on as well. Sure. Okay. And is, is there only, is there only one cloud associated with each account? Can you have multiple different clouds? Does that make sense? Or is it just one per account? I think there's a way, but I, I I'm not sure. I, I think you can, cause I, I, I think I've seen people using different, uh, like, like sub accounts within an account. So I think you can do that, but I'm, I'm not sure whether that's a possible on the free plan or that's okay. something that. I would just recommend people to do, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I think it's possible. Okay, so standard, we're doing the standard scenario where we have we have a cloud name that I specified to be James Q Quick, and then uh, with that, uh, I can type it in here, and then what I did earlier is just save this and then try to run this again, and now you click Still. on the widget, and uh, you see, or you click on the button, now you see the widget, which comes like pre-configured to let you do a lot of different things, including choose a file from uh, my desktop, for example, and I, this is just a random screenshot, and I try to upload, and then I got a another error, and uh, the reason is because um, the pre presets, and maybe you can tell me what these presets are, but one, by default, this doesn't actually match a preset, uh, upload preset that I have, and then two, there's a difference between like a signed preset and an unsigned preset, so if you wanna, um, give a little bit of detail on what that is and then we'll get into like sign versus unsign. Sure. So the whole idea of the preset is to, you know, give access to, uh, in this case, the, the upload widget to, to your account, right? So you need to specify, you need to actually go into your cloud in your account and create a preset, right? So if you go to, uh, the, the code wheel icon, which is settings and then under upload, I think if it stores the middle of the page, you will find this section that says upload uh, presets, right? So you have a few upload presets already. Um, and then if you want to create a new one, you say add upload preset. Now with the upload preset, you can actually specify how the upload should work or what it should do. You know, I mentioned in the beginning that you could organize your images into folders, for example, right? So you could say, if I'm using this upload uh, widget, and I'm, uh, you can now create an upload preset that says every image that gets uploaded via this pre, uh, this widget should go into the folder, uh, you know, Twitch yeah. stream live or, or something, right? You could also specify additional options, whether, uh, you know, the original file name should be preserved or whether Cloudinary should generate a unique file name, whether we should, if there's an, an existing file name with the name of the file that you're uploading, whether we should override that 
or not. Mm. So these are the kind of, you know, like think of these as upload settings that you, um, that you specify. And the other thing is you can use, use these presets on the delivery side of things um, along with, so in the preset, you can actually specify transformations as well. And what that means is think about the mobile app, right? Where you display some images and then now you say, instead of, you know, showing the images in 300 by 300, I now want 600 by 600. So now you need to wait for all your mobile app users to, to download and to update your app in order to get the latest, mm -hmm. right? But what if you take away that sort of control and put it in a centralized location so that images that are being shown in the mobile app are actually controlled via these presets. So in the preset, you just say, for this preset that I assigned to my mobile app, as opposed to transforming them to 300 by 300, now transform them to 600 to 600. And this is going to be making the update. So you don't need to wait for users to update the latest version of your app, right? Because you are in control of this setting. Um, so any anything so, that like collection, like any, any sort of collection that you know you want to do X, Y, and Z to those images, you can just go ahead and define those, whatever those things are inside of a preset in the and then preset, apply that correct. to, in this case, this um, upload widget. Yes. Sick. And so the other thing is, you know, unsigned and signed. And I think you wanted to uh, uh, talk about these uh, yep. uh, a little bit more. Yeah, well, uh, I'm mainly just asking you what exactly that okay. means. I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what that means is, so obviously, if you're an unsigned preset, that means that, and, and I do suggest that after this, you hit that delete button next to your unsigned preset name, because I could now take that name and just use that to upload stuff to your account. Right. There's no control, right? Yep. Whereas with a signed preset, you need to have some sort of server-side code that generates the, uh, you know, a, a signature for the upload. And now you need, you know, you're introducing a secret you're introducing additional security so you so you can't just take the the upload preset name and upload to anyone's account you need to actually you know have the server have the secret in place you know verify the upload etc so if you just want to you know very quickly uh you know upload stuff maybe you know you have a what would be a use case you know maybe you have a trusted source uh, you know, you have an admin interface where people log in and they're not really technical and they won't look at your source code, then yes, it's perfectly fine from, from one place to you just run an unsigned upload into yeah. maybe a, a specific folder in a cloud in your account, right? Um, and I think that's that's what we're going to do now anyway, because, you know, to come up with a, a server with a signature, it's not that complicated, but it's... But it is work. Takes some, it takes some more yeah. work, right? You need an express server, you can do it in Node. Yeah. Um, and that's... Very soon... Go ahead. No, I just wanted to say that very soon, uh, I did see that already. So I was actually helping my colleague to uh, to create this. So there's a there's going to be a cloud unit course um, on some advanced development practices, and one unit in that course is going to be about this, like how to create signed upload URLs, how to work with signed upload presets, and, and things like that. Sweet. Well, I will. I'll definitely be interested in that when it's out. Um, also rats, I had a comment. I forgot what it was. Uh, oh, this is why. So I've really started to pay attention recently to like almost every API that you interact with SaaS service, whatever it is, there's usually some sort of like API key. And in this case, like the API key in Cloudinary, it seems not necessarily private. It's the secret associated with that, but you have some sort of private credential. And the more I've learned about security and, and authentication authorization and stuff, the more I've learned that like none of that stuff can really go to the browser. You can't include uh, an API secret or a secret credential of any sort in your source code because other people can right click and view source. So this is where the need for like either serverless functions or just a server comes into place where you can store private credentials and environment variables that are just on that server that no one else can access and they're not checked in a source code. This is a really interesting topic where almost every like getting started does what we're about to do where you just kind of include it in your uh, source code or you leave it unsigned or you leave it like unverified of a user, things like that. But the reality is like for all of these integrations, there's another step that you have to do to make sure that you're protecting your stuff so that no one else can go and spam your account. Yes. Sweet. 
Uh, but for demo purposes, we'll go ahead and I just copy. Oh, I didn't actually mean to click on that. Um, I'm just copying. Well, if you click on it, you can actually see the details of it. Maybe that's true. Yeah. You know, these are some of the settings. Um, signed, unsigned, you know, folder that you want to use. Mm -hmm. um, uh, access mode, public. You can actually, you know, have delivery types. I, I won't get into those. <laughs> um, you can actually, on the left hand side, you can actually run additional things with this preset. So you can do media anal uh, analysis and AI. Oh, sweet. So you could okay. say, you know, after you upload, do um, OCR text detection. Yeah. Right. So you could just, you know, you upload an image. So uh, that was an actual use case that I did. So I uploaded an image of a car that showed the license plates. And we have a feature that, first of all, finds text on a picture. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it basically shows you the, the pixels where the, it basically draws a bounding box around the text. And then you can take that and pixelate. Uh, there's a pixelate effect. So just by uploading this image, yeah. when I actually saw the image, it was already pixelated uh, around the number, uh, the license plate. Of the so number to blur it out, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you can you know detect. You can also do background removal. So yeah. you know on the upload, you say, here's an image of my product with a, some background. You say background removal. Uh, I think there's two or three options. I think the, the cloud and the AI is one of the options. And then you say, when you upload this image, also do the background removal. Yep. Right. Super so th cool. there's, uh, you know, many, many settings that you can uh, change here for the presets. And that's where like, what I get so excited about is all these different services that you you can do like whatever the hell you want, right? Like after you figure out how to use them, you can combine them in such creative ways. And so all the different things yeah. that you can do inside of those upload presets is a perfect example. Um, I apologize to who I was calling ID Zine and it's I design for you, which totally makes sense. So I apologize for mis <laughs> misreading and pronouncing that the entire time. And then they asked about uh, a WordPress plugin, whether or not it's better than the widget. Um, saying they had trouble with the plugin in WordPress and I had to deactivate it. Looks like Mickey said there's a new version. Um, so maybe that's something that would help out. I don't know if you have any specific um, experience with that. If you do. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't, unfortunately. Okay. I know that we released a, a new WordPress plugin. Um, that's, that's about it. That I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, what would probably be useful, I would imagine, for the Cloudinary team I designed for you is if you have a specific feedback on why you had to stop using that plugin, um, that would probably be a good thing to um, to to push back to Cloudinary if you had that information. Um, yeah. In the meantime, I went and pasted in the upload preset to that one that we just talked about, which is unsigned. And then um, on side of here or inside of here, I should be able to uh, browse and upload an image. And I'll pick one of these random ones. Here's a screenshot of me like editing my course um, that is coming out in a few weeks, by the way. And it uh, looks like that's okay. And I can click done. And then if I go back to my media library, um, there it is. So it made it all the way to Cloudinary. I didn't have to write any code really at all. This is just kind of the built-in widget. Just pull in a, a, a piece of JavaScript and then uh, add the, not the domain, that's what I would call it in all zero land, but the cloud name and then the upload mm -hmm. preset. And don't need any extra credentials, can do this from front end JavaScript just because this is an unsigned um, unsigned one. And at this point, like after we've kind of proven out that demo, now I can probably go back into my settings and my upload <laughs> and go ahead and delete that one. Um, I don't know yep. if any hackers out there were fast enough to try to use that. Uh, before I deleted it, but it's now been deleted and uh, you can't do anything with it. Um, and then Mickey the Great uh, posted for Rose Apple Media, um, posted a link to how to automatically um, remove a um, background. So that's super cool too. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the, tutorials for that. yeah, that's one of the really cool features. One of the things that we talked a little bit about um, in the past uh, and kind of earlier today, it's just like the auto generation of an image of some sort. So like if I uploaded an image of myself with a green screen, in theory, I could do like a background remover, removal. I could add a new background to it. I could then like add a layer on top with my logo or something. I, I kind of want to get into doing something like that. And a lot of people, I think, have used Cloudinary to do 
um, to automatically generate their images for like cloud or not cloud for uh, blog posts. So like they're shareable images, they can yep. uh, basically have it hit a serverless function, which does the interaction in Cloudinary, I think, and then return the the new image, which is like represents like the blog post or the stream or whatever it is they do, which I think is super, super cool. Yes. So even th that's also what I started to do for, um, you know, when I, I, I write a blog post and then I share it on social media, like Twitter, you mm -hmm. know, Twitter generates this, you know, the, what they call, I think, a Twitter card. Cool. Yeah. Um, yep. And then what I have now for my blog posts is actually an image that got generated with Cloudinary because we have support for text overlay. So you can actually, mm -hmm. you know, add text via the URL to any image and then you can specify the font face type, you know, whether it's bold, you know, you can basically configure all these, these font related options and then you just generate that image. And then that's what I use as a uh, sort of like a social, social uh, share image thing. Card yeah. Type, yeah. I, I need to actually figure that out. So maybe, maybe we'll spend, maybe I'll, I'll try to bug you for some one-on-one -on -one time to help guide me through that. Or, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out. And I will, there, there's I, a, there's a price for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure out, we'll figure out what the price is and then, uh, we'll do that. And then that's going to be some aspect of that. I'm definitely going to include in like demos that I give in talks of, I love to have users participate or not users, the audience participate in talks that I give. And so some of it's been like, have them tweet about something and then uh, pull in that tweet and display it. Uh, it could also be like tweet a hashtag with a picture. I could take that picture, like I said earlier, and do any sort of overlay uh, with a logo or a hashtag or something like that. So more to come on that for everybody else if you're like paying attention to the talks that I give in the future. Um, cool, so we've got, uh, we've got the upload widget. We talked about the upload presets. We talked about what the cloud name is and just kind of figuring out what that is. And then the last thing I wanted to do uh, that we talked about before is just kind of show how to um, either in Node or a serverless function, which runs Node. Um, and I think the serverless function route would be fun. Um, so we'll do that is have a very simple front end that can submit a file to uh, a back end of some sort, either Node or serverless function. And then the, that serverless function or Node endpoint will then upload the image to Cloudinary. So it's kind of, I guess doing like the server aspect um, and the front end aspect of what that widget just did for us. But I thought that would be really cool to kind of de deconstruct that and just kind of show you how it works. That way, like if I feel like I know how to use the API, then I can go and do whatever else I want later on. So um, with this index HTML, maybe, maybe the first thing would be to go ahead and me just create like a hello world serverless function just to kind of show that that we can have it run. Does that sound like a good starting point? Yeah. So you're going to use Netlify service functions? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is create a functions directory and create a hello world JS just as a test. And uh, the way serverless functions work in Netlify is you do an exports.handler and then this is a function that uh, takes in an event. Uh, it also takes in context and a callback. Um, for the most part, what I use is the event, unless we specifically need something. And then I can return a 200 and then a body. And uh, you have to stringify your JSON objects. So if I wanted to create an object in here that says, hello world, then I just stringify it that way. And Netlify CLI has a really amazing way to be able to run functions locally and uh, basically kind of simulating the environment that they would run in when they're deployed in Netlify, which actually means behind the scenes deployed in AWS. And so to set that up, we need a Netlify TOML file. And I need to, I forget if it's build and then functions equals functions i'll have to verify that that's right here in a that's, second yeah you, i think there's a trailing slash that you need to add on because then it's a functions folder like right that there. yeah mm -hmm. okay so what this is telling is we're going to run a command called netlify dev which basically runs your the netlify environment locally 
this is telling it to uh, host or serve functions uh, and it automatically picks up any files that are inside of that directory that export a handler like this. And then in theory, this should just, as we call this, this should return back the 200. So let's give this a shot. Let's run Netlify dev. I think it's, so just one thing to point out is, for, especially for those of you who are new to Netlify functions, is that the return statement or the structure of the return <sighs> statement is, is given. So it's not just, you know, that James said, oh, let's return a status code on a body. Yeah. You must specify a status code and you must specify a body. Otherwise it's not a valid Netlify serverless function or not even, because under the hood they run Lambda, right? So yep. it's not a, a valid Lambda function. Yep. And the one thing that you reminded me of the other day and I said, was a bug that I think is only a bug when it's deployed. So when you said you hadn't experienced what I was, what I had had issues with, I don't have that problem if I'm running locally, but when deployed, I did. And what I mean is uh, you get three different things in here, the event, the context, and the callback. And you have to use or call the callback function if your function is not marked as async. So you do it like this, where you pass the error first and then the actual object that you want to return like that. I get some formatting in here, I think, if I do this. So if you then mark your function as a sync, uh, you don't have to use the callback. You can just return your value directly. Um, so this is almost always what I do is it looks like this. So now this probably would have worked, but I think deployed Actually, in Netlify might not have. Actually, you can now remove the callback. Yep. Because then, and then. And yeah. the context. Cool. Yeah. So this will run this Lambda function at localhost three, four, five, six, seven. And then you see this really long path that auto completes because I've done this a lot locally is to call any of your functions. You type in dot Netlify slash functions and then the name of the function, which is or the name of the file, which in this case is the name of the function. And then we get back our hello world. So that seems to work. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um, and then from there, what we need to do, I guess, is just have um, inside of our index.html, we just need to have a basic, um, or actually tell me if I missed anything, but a basic form that has an input of type file. And then we can just have it post directly to uh, a new URL, which in this case will be like uh, upload now instead of hello world. I think that's that's all correct so let's see if we can actually <laughs> write it all right i'm gonna get rid of all of that stuff that i'm getting rid of which is basically boilerplate um so you can go and grab that from the docs if anybody's interested and then i've got an example of this here and i'm gonna paste that in and this like i said is is a basic form um a couple of things that are important it will make a post so you need to specify that and then where are we going to send this to? Um, I don't actually know right offhand how to make sure that this file is served by Netlify. I don't know what the default I, public directory so the is. The way I did this was to, I don't, I because I have written a, a, an example. It's, it's very interesting to actually compare what you wrote and what I wrote. <laughs> um, what I would, or what I did was, I actually don't have the what was the action attribute on my form mm -hmm. because what I do is instead I I have some JavaScript code right that you know I have a click handler for the button and then I say on click yeah. you know uh, fetch I use the fetch API to fetch the the serverless function cool um, yeah let's go ahead and do that so let's do an ID for this button and this will be submit button we'll get rid of this action and the post mm -hmm. actually which by the way um what my actually the I, i'm not sure if you should remove the post maybe you can maybe probably you can probably you can yeah because think... we're going to be programmatic to send the post yep. HTTP post because we're yep. doing a prevent default um yep. which i think means what i think it means <laughs> and then it prevents the default event. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we might need, I don't know if there's a difference here. We might need to handle the on submit. So this might actually be, uh, the upload form that we'll get a reference to in JavaScript instead um, of the button. No, you don't need that. 
Don't. I mean, you could, but then what we're going to do is add a listener for click on mm -hmm. the button, and then we can read. So what you need is an ID on the file. On the input. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And I think, well, we might, if we did a, a submit handle on the form, we might be able to get the data inside of it, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So let's do... Probably. Uh, yeah. Let's do that. That looks good. And then I added a app.js. Uh, so the script uh, source equals app or ARP app.js. And by the way, with this, there's kind of two things you specify in Netlify when you do continuous integration is you specify a build command and then you also specify like where your static assets live, static assets being the, the, the assets for your site, like an index HTML page, stuff like that. So this did work um, by default with my index HTML being in this root folder, Netlify dev will serve this thing at uh, localhost 8888. So that worked, which was cool. All right, so inside of my app.js, now I need to get two things and I've got a little shortcut here to get an element by ID and we'll have the submit button. Is that what we said? Submit button yep. and, the and the file input. File input. And then on click, and I'm kind of running through this. So if people have questions about, um, actually that's wrong. Yeah, if people have questions about what I'm doing, uh, just throw them in the chat and I'll be happy to clarify what we're doing. But we are adding an event listener to the button and what we want to call our, yeah, is not event, but e.prevent default. default. Yeah. And let's just log out um, submitting just to see if this is connected up right. Uh, so we've got a reference to both the submit button and the file input, and then uh, we're wiring up the event for a, or the click, the button for a click event. And let's see now, we do submit. Uh, looks like it, looks like it still I think you need to refresh. refresh. Yep, I think you're right. And now we get submitting. Yep, exactly. Um, Okay, cool. So then you'll actually have to help me. How okay. do we um, get from the file input the thing that we need to then send to the serverless function? Okay. So so let, let's spice this up a little bit. So so because uh, because then I want to show you something really cool. Uh, we're going to use the file reader API, which is you know one of the uh, it's a built-in browser API that you can use. And what I did in my example, I think it's just you know. I, I, good learning uh, moment for, for everyone. So if you would add a, a div um, and an ID gallery uh, just under the form. Okay. And then I'm using my Emmet snippets again nice. here. Uh, yeah, that's it. So so what you can do with the file reader API is not only read the, the actual, uh, you know, like bytes of the image and then send it to your serverless endpoint, which is our ultimate goal here, but you can also actually uh, preview your files that you're mm. selecting, right? Okay. So what you can do, um, you have the file input. Uh, so inside JavaScript, you can actually put a, a, a listener for that as well. So if you do file input or add event listener, and the event that we want to listen on is change. Okay. And it's just a, uh, um, there's not even event, but yeah, so it's okay. just a, just a callback function there. Um, and then you can now collect your file. So, so with the f when you specify input type file, you can actually specify whether you want to allow multiple files to be uploaded or just a single file. And that can be achieved by adding the multiple attributes uh, to your input file. So if you just extend that to be, or just add multiple. Okay. And you can actually show this now as a demo, just so people see what that multiple is. Yeah. So if you go back to your browser, Make sure what this will allow you to do is when you do, you see it actually updated from choose file to choose files. Oh yeah, okay. And now it does allow you to select multiple files, right? And it says four um, files, cool. Yeah, so what, we can, what we're going to do first is we're going to display those four files mm -hmm. here, just so that we see what you selected, right? So you have multiple in there. So what you can do is collect those files. So inside JavaScript, you would you know, say, um, 
create a variable called files and then you select your what was it uh, file input and then dot uh, file uh, files even files like that yeah so that is going to collect your files and then what we can do mm, probably need to get a reference to the gallery uh, we need to get a reference to the gallery but probably it would make sense to have an, uh, yet another function so if you create a function called preview file that will help us so this is going to be our little sort of helper function here uh, which should accept a, f a single file okay. as a parameter because so what we're going to do here is for each selected file we want to call this preview file which is then going to read the file and put it into the gallery uh -huh. um, so preview file and now you create the reader so that should be a let variable because we're going to uh actually it could be a const it doesn't matter and it's just new file reader new is it capital capital f capital yeah. r okay okay so again just to reiterate for for the people in the chat the this file reader thing is uh one of the browser apis uh i really love the mdn docs so if you just you know google for mdn file reader you will find the entire spec uh, and some samples there as well um Right, so if you now type in reader uh, and then you just press dot, you should get the, the methods. And there's there's a method that is uh, called read as data URL. And you can see you can actually read the, the actual data as array buffer, binary string data, your text, etc. So, you know, how you want to read the content of the file, which is going to use this data URL. And then that requires us to pass in the file. like you know in other words what is the file that we're trying to read mm -hmm. as a data url and that is going to be a file that we select inside the input type uh, file selector right um and then it has some events that it emits while it's you know reading the file so you can listen for those and all you need to do is um so that's it in a new line uh, okay, you just say yeah. reader dot on load end got it Okay, and that's uh, uh, that has to be equal to a callback function. So you do onload end space equal function, and then yeah. Okay, 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 gotcha. Yeah, and okay, and now we create an image based from the uh, the data URL, right? So we say document dot create element image. So we actually create an image element. Great. Element. And then do you pass an image as a, sh like IMG as a as string? As a string, okay. yeah. So this is going to essentially create an image tag and then you do dot, or you could separate it. Yeah, that's that's cool as well. So okay. you separate it to a variable and then now you say IMG dot uh, SRC. So you set the source of the image, which is going to be reader dot result. Reader. So reader dot result okay. is, is it... effectively the uh, the data URL. Right, so okay. we set the source of that image to be the data URL. Um, do you get anything in this callback function? Like, do you get that data in here as well for the load end? For the load end, no, no, there's nothing there. Okay. It's just empty. Okay. And then now you can uh, call gallery dot append child image. Append child image. And then, yeah, so this. Okay, so this is the preview file. So this is a separate method. So what we need to do is to the change right there. Exactly now you can call handle files. For each one. Oh, I'm sorry, pre preview files. Uh, wait. Because originally, either either we need to iterate through them here or iterate through them down here to do it for each I, one. I would separate it out. So, so what I did, I separated it out to yet another thing. I just called it handle files. I, I like to separate things into functions that's that's me um uh -huh. equals to files and then you say files equal uh yeah so inside handle files you say files equal to and then you do an array and then you do the um spread syntax on files so that's the three dots and then oh nice <laughs> uh, no, no, no. <laughs> so the the three dots is i think is a called the spread yep. operator i think um and then now you do files dot for each preview file and i'm gonna um 
call this something like copied files just to um that okay was that bad <laughs> i uh, let's try let's let's see if that works and then now you need to do well because i'm assuming copied. like you're trying you're making a yeah, copy of the files for a reason right yeah so assigning it back to like this if you actually make a copy of this and then assign it back to the same thing let, let's let's I'm try not. this version <laughs> well, we'll see yeah we can, i'm we trying can to think of what uh, those implications would be uh and then you you just pass in um all you need to do is just pass in preview file oh yeah i always this is such a cool syntax because it's already basically your callback function correct and then i need to update this to be just one so yeah. Okay, when so we're handling the files yeah yeah so yeah we let the user upload or select files which triggers change and then we get a reference to those files pass it to handle files which makes a copy of them iterates through each one and then calls preview file for each one which will then um basically add it on to the gallery the one one thing that we could do also is set the gallery inner html or not ever yeah. that actually needs to go up here I that think. should go to the chain or there yeah or to the change listener so when it yep. changes it, it first empties it and our html equals just empty string and that all that's doing for people that are watching is just wiping out the previous files if we have to update with a new section of files or a selection of files so we could try this so hopefully this is going to work so just select a few <laughs> I've, I've do one. <laughs> I'm gonna do two. Yeah. I've got yeah. I've got two selected, and da na na. Did you refresh? No, I didn't refresh. I keep. I'm so used to having like live reloading servers, but when I do Netlify Dev with just a static file, it doesn't work the same way. So let's try that again. And we get really big files, but we get both of them. So we could go and, yeah. and add our own styling you could, and stuff. You could, yeah, so where you do image.source, you know, image.src, you can do image.width and say, like, I don't know, 300. A string? 300 pixels? Uh, it's not, it's a, Just an integer? integer? Just 300, yeah. So now, now that's going to shrink the, the width of those. Let's try so this is still yeah. not doing an upload just to clarify to yep. you know to to viewers um this is just <laughs> wonderful <laughs> right so this... this is just showing you the files that you are about to upload like yep. previewing them uh kind of right and by the way these images are like i was editing a video of mine and i had like four minutes of like i couldn't figure out what was going on so i just took screenshots like 10 of them of me like trying to figure out what was going on in the in the video that I was recording or editing. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't dare to share those when I'm <laughs> uh, so kudos to you. <laughs> um okay so now let's actually upload the images, right? Sweet. Um so this will be um let's write here. a method or a function, right? <laughs> uh let's call it upload and so, so what we're going to do, and, you know, and we discussed this just before coming here, is that you, you really have two options. So when it comes to serverless functions, you need to remember that, you know, serverless means that there's still a server, of course, but you don't control that server. Therefore, yeah. when, it, when it comes to file uploads, and if, you know, if any of the viewers have, have done file uploading, they know what happens is, you take that file, you upload it to a server, then in that server, you, you get to specify the, the folder where that file is going to be, like, you know, uh, upload images. And then from that folder, you can take that image and do whatever you want with it, right? But with serverless functions, you can't do that. There's, you don't, you don't know have access to the file system. File where it's going to send it, yeah. exactly. You just don't see the file system. So what we're going to do is, actually, we're going to send the, the base64 encoded version of the image which is you know just a really long string mm -hmm. and send that to the uh the uh, serverless function and what's great about the cloud memory upload uh method uh, so we're going to write node.js but we have you know php 
Java, Ruby, whatever. Uh, we have all these backend language supports, but all of the Apollo functions either accept a path to a file, mm -hmm. um, I think a remote file as well, or hmm. a, a base 64 encoded string uh, of, a, of an image, right? So this is what we're going to utilize now. So const upload images, okay. Um, as a parameter, I would send in the, uh, the, you know, the encoded image. So call that, I don't know, base 64 encoded image or something. Is this, are we doing all of them at once or one at a time? Oh, we're going to be doing it one at a time. I, um, no, it has to be one at a time. It, it, yeah. Okay. So just upload image. Yeah. Um, and then in here, we're going to invoke our net, uh, Netlify function, right? So yep. I would, I don't know if you prefer, uh, you know, async await or promises. I use async, async await, await all the time. Yeah. Good. Um, <laughs> Good. And then you say, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, we're on the same page. Yep. So then I type in that URL functions and upload. Yep. And then. And then. You pass method. in a post and then the body, which is just, you don't even need to do that actually. You can just send the, um, because it's going to be a string already, right? Oh, because we're not sending JSON. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So okay. it's just base 64 encoded image. Sweet. And then, and then later on, we can figure out what we send as a response, but or what we do with the response. Yep. Okay, uh, line 12, you need to put an await. Yes. How many times then, have you missed that in your career? I, Me, it's lots. <laughs> wait for the await. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so now there's that. And now what we can do is just call. <clears throat> I'm going to you know cheat from here. Um, so where we have the event listener for click, there, yeah, you're already there. You're way ahead of me. <laughs> um, so let's just read all the files, right? So we should do like, you know, const files equals to, and then do the uh, spread operator again, uh, which is... should be file input dot files. Yep. Okay, so now we have the array. So, you know, we, we now have that array, which means that we can for each it. So we can, for each file that the user selects, we are just going to, so here's the thing, you need to call, yeah. uh, yeah. we could refactor <laughs> this, but so you need to call that data URL thing again, right? You need to invoke the reader again, right? Right, yes, sorry. Uh, yep. So for each file, you need to say, const reader, new file reader. Um, and then pass that to the upload image, which yeah, the so the refactoring part, I'm assuming you're alluding to is like, we instead of we repeating do, this logic yeah yeah but um, we can do that later so okay. it's first let's see if this is work uh, uh yep. the whole thing and then you need, need the, the yeah you just need to empty the on load end bits and then yep. change some stuff there uh so paste that in there and okay. we don't need to and create any of that stuff Ex no and in there you just say what was the method upload image Upload and then just pass image. in the reader the result result okay um and i'm assuming with reader there's a like a dot on error also if something goes wrong oh yeah yeah so if you just type in reader dots it should give you uh so reader dot and on yeah. so there's on error there's on abort there's on on on, on everything <laughs> uh Corey from Twilio is here dropping in and say, say, Hey, tending to kids today. So I won't be able to hang out for long. Uh, that's cool. I know lots of people have stuff going on, Corey, but this is some exciting cloudinary stuff. I think we're doing cool stuff. <laughs> Get into the serverless functions now. Uh, but regardless, thanks for coming and hanging out for a little bit with what time you have. So I think you have one too many error functions or arrows on line eight. On line eight, too many arrows file. <laughs> yeah. Just one regular callback. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so theoretically, the front end part is done. 
And so what um, we need to do is ride the. Um... Like that, grab the file string from the vent body. And this, I'm not 100% sure on this, but like it's already, event body is already a string, so we can just grab that thing directly, and that should be the the data URI string. That's, yeah, that should work, okay. but let's, let's test this. <laughs> this is, I still need sound effects built in here, so I can do like this drum the, roll type thing, and exactly, this like is the, the celebratory yeah. stuff, and make sure I refresh um, this page now. So let's choose, let's just start with one file. And uh submit get an error in Console here error. reader dot on air is not a function did i type that incorrectly so it's not a f yeah uh, let's oh see. did i do i did the same thing that you already corrected me on um where it doesn't take a call wait oh yeah it's a uh, it's reader on error yeah. equals to i think yeah yep there we go eventually i'll like listen and pay attention to what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> All right, and by the way, uh, Corey's in here. The screen, so one of the screenshots that I just showed is me like screenshotting the Twilio streams as like inspiration for like how cool streams look. So a little shout out to Twilio there. Uh, so it said submitting it, and it didn't throw an error. Came okay, so to. Sorry. So it did invoke the service function, but for whatever reason, it says didn't find it is it just a 404 quest aborted um, why would that be so naturally five wait is it not no that should be naturally should... five functions upload what if you just kill the... Mm, I think you're right. Because if you remember, I renamed that file from Hello World. And I'm not sure if you basically create new API or new serverless functions. I'm not sure they pick it up automatically without refreshing. I'm hoping that's what it is. Well, let's see. This is the epitome of what development is, by the way. It's like you try it and you say, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see what the network tab says in that one. We got a 200, um, okay. and this logged out this really big string. Ooh. Sweet. So it's doing something. Yeah, so now all what we need to do is take that really long string. So that's, for people who are interested, this is, you know, if you just Google for base64 encoded, uh, I think you can either do data URIs or base64 encoding, and you can see that basically what you see here, this string is effectively a base64 encoded version of your image. Um, and we're lucky because Cloudinary takes that and can upload the image this way. So, yeah, we need to bring in the Cloudinary SDK. Sweet. Uh, so we'll install Cloudinary and I'm installing .env to pull in environment variables because we're going to do this securely and uh, not just leave it open for anyone else to do. Which is the correct way. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and then I've got a couple of things in here, I think, that I can just copy in so we'll get a reference to cloudinary and then we'll also do a require on dot env and call config so that will give us access to our environment variables and then i'm going to cheat again and reference those by configuring our cloudinary client with the cloud name which is not secret necessarily but um, api key and the api secret so those are all inside of this dot env file which uh, thanks to the .env package, we get um, access to those things, just like real environment variables when you have it deployed somewhere at process.env. Yeah. And just to mention, we did already show that, but in the um, Cloudinary dashboard, that's where you get the cloud name and the API key. Mm -hmm. And the API secret is by default, you know, hidden. Yep. But all that info is there. And also, you can just you see that environment variable that cloudy underscore url equals to mm -hmm. da, 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 da. so you can actually just use that uh entire thing and then you don't need to do that configure uh method it will just you know pick it up from the environment file the whole thing okay so yeah okay that makes sense um i mean it's you know both ways work yep 
Um, but I had seen a tutorial that did that, I think, and I kind of, I didn't quite understand what was going on. So included in that URL is going to be a combination of the cloud name, API key and secret, I imagine. Yeah. It's just all formatted. And then by setting it in your environment, then it's basically taken care of. Correct. Cool. Okay. Um, so at this point we have, we're bringing in Cloudinary in theory, we've got it configured correctly. And then with the Cloudinary object and this file string, we call uploader. Yep. Upload. Correct. And then pass in the file string. Correct. And, and so. Yeah, go ahead. And again, you know, uh, whatever your choice is, you can in upload, we accept a callback or you can do promise or you can async await this. So you can actually do uh, await or like const response or something um, and then await that and that should just do it. And I'm gonna log out the response too because the response is gonna show us information about that file that was created, I believe. I would actually return the response in the body. Yep, oh, fair enough. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, is, and response is an object, I believe, it or is. the thing so that comes, so we do... can just that? Yeah, simplify that, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. um, I could still log it out there, but I don't have to. Um, so just, just to kind of reiterate where we are in the cool parts of this, all of the things that we've done so far have nothing necessarily to do with Cloudinary. All we're doing is like getting a image or a string representation of an image to be submitted from the front end into the back end. Now the only thing we have to do with that is configure the Cloudinary um, SDK and then call upload. It's basically what it boils down to, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah. let's save this. I need to restart my Netlify dev, Netlify dev. We'll start that up. Uh, it doesn't have to do a build or anything, so it's pretty fast. And then let's look at our localhost 888. Let's refresh that page, choose a file. Do I have anything like those? I don't want to put files of pictures of other people. I don't know what I have on here. We'll upload one of these like <laughs> this is my debugging face videos or images. So there's that image and we'll click submit and it came back with a 200. Let's see the response in here is an object that has a bunch of Cloudinary information. I also logged it. Um, I thought I logged oh, yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to log it in here. That's okay. Um, but I think it shows basic information like the URL, a unique identifier. <laughs> Exactly. It shows the, you know, the size, uh, secure URL, um, stuff <laughs> pretty much, it, it, you know, every time when you see that it's just going to be an indication as to your upload was successful. Okay. Right. So you get like, you know, the width, the height, the format. Um, so, so here's, here's another thing, right? So you see tags, for example, mm -hmm. you could say, that as part of your upload, automatically tag this image. And right. then this response would actually contain those tags. Yep. If you say, while uploading this image, do OCR text rec recognition, then there would be another property here that would say, this is the text that I found. Um, if you if you would do, we have celebrity recognition, it would actually return you the name of the celebrities that you find the, the, the images. Oh, wow, really? So there's like, you know, you could really take this to the next level. Yeah. So essentially that upload method um, has an options object. And mm -hmm. in that option op options object, you can just specify you know, tons of different do things, whatever you want. Yeah. So how and if you scroll down, that would oh. be the URL actually to access the image itself. Okay. And you see, so I would, I would always stick to the secure URL, just this, you know, HTTPS. Oh, it's funny. I was looking at this earlier and I was like, what is the difference between the URL and the secure URL? And it looked the it's exact just, same and it's just HTTPS yeah. instead of HTTP. HTTP. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, let me grab that. And it might have an extra quote on the end. So this should be that image. Cool. So I am yeah. live inside of Cloudinary world with the image of me, like oddly trying to figure out what the hell's going on, going wrong in a video. <laughs> um, yeah. And then we should, at this point, I can get rid of this page, back in the dashboard, um, if I go to the media library and then in the root folder, I should see that new image that we just uploaded, which is super cool. 
Um, yep. And I th- kind of to your point earlier, like I could have specified like a folder to put it in and that sort of stuff. I'm I'm curious, to, how does this relate to those upload defaults that we looked at earlier? Like, is there a way to apply one of those upload defaults inside of settings to this? So what you would do is, I I think the upload method accepts in the options a, a preset name, but I'm not 100%. I would need to double check that. Okay. Um, Let's, do you want to give it a shot? Oh, uh, we can. Let's see. So if I use In this, the meantime, I'll open our docs as well. Just to, uh... <laughs> and um, let's just put this. Can I um, put this in? Te- do I need to do slash test or just test inside of here? You need to put test, but then you need to create a folder as well. Okay, so I have to create this, that myself. So you, you save that and then you go back to the media library. Mm-hmm. And there and is a um, folder. Yeah, I need test. To test um rose apple media has to go thanks for hanging out i appreciate it i hope you got something out of it and enjoyed it um but yeah have a good rest of the day whatever time zone it is for you so we have we have that test folder i can come back to settings and in my upload i customized this new default uh ml default is the name and it's signed so i'm assuming just the fact that we configured uh, Cloudinary with those credentials. Now we're able to use a signed one, and inside of here it says uh, to put that inside of a test folder, folder called yeah. test. Yep. Um, all right. So then in Cloudinary, is it upload? And then there's in so options. it's upload, and then it's an object. Yep. Preset. And uh, it's upload underscore preset. I think there it is. And I'm getting IntelliSense in here, which is great. I love it. And. Uh, just paste in ML default there. Correct. I'm getting excited. This is this is some cool stuff, um, and especially like <laughs> as you. <laughs> I hope this is going to work. Well, yeah, we'll see. If it doesn't I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> We're pushing the boundaries here, but this yeah. is this is where I get so excited of just like you learn a couple of the basic things, then you start to navigate the dashboard, and you're starting to put it all together and really customize and do the things that you want, yep. assuming that it works. We'll see. All right, so let's try upload an image. Uh, what else do I have on here? Anything more exciting? There's a screenshot of code. This was um, this screenshot here is actually one of the most exciting like random features I've seen in a website recently is in Gatsby Cloud. You can bulk upload environment variables. So if you've ever done like your one-off environment variables in Netlify, you have to type in each one. In Gatsby Cloud, you can just basically paste in your local .env, all the contents of it, and it'll take all the uh, environment variables out of there. It's such a simple thing, but it's like incredibly useful. It's the small things that I get excited about. <laughs> All right, let's submit. Um, hopefully it comes back as a 200. And then what we want to check is go back to our media library and inside of test, which is marked as new. Hopefully we have- It's, it's new because there's a new image in there. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay, sweet. It works. Yeah. And then this is where um, all those different things that you said we could customize with the preset before, now we're able to use the preset and it would use all of the things that are that it can define or specify. Exactly. And then furthermore, so if you just click on add-ons, which is on the, the last menu item here, so we do have a lot of add-ons that you can use. So like, you know, background removal, object aware cropping, um, you know, we have AI video transcription. So sometimes you leverage other services like Google and AWS, but you see recognition, celebrity detection and stuff. So if you enable these, and and again, some of these, if you, I don't know, go with recognition, celebrity detection, uh, which is on uh, third row, third column, you see, we give <laughs> you free monthly detections for free. Yeah. Um, and what you can do uh that's actually that's the that's a live example right so this is i think ruby but basically upload is upload you specify the image and then in the same way how we passed in the upload preset in the options you say detection aws underscore re case of recognize underscore face Mm -hmm. auto tagging 0.8 so this is going to say if the confidence Confidence. of the ai is more than 0.8 then automatically add the tag okay or exactly so then Gotcha. Yeah. So then when you check your image in the media library, it's going to say this is the name of the file and tags assigned to it will be, you know, Tiger Woods. In this Sweet. Case. So cool. Um, 
I just need more pictures of celebrities <laughs> that I can recognize. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> do you have Do you have any idea like out of I'm assuming like there's several different add-ons here, so there's a lot that people can work mm -hmm. with. Any idea what like what the most popular out of these might be, just from general usage? AI background removal. That ah, yeah, makes sense. Um, and that's the demo of it, right? So yep. that's the picture. That's what you get. Yep. Um, and, and because so this is one of the examples where we control the neural network. So we, we took all the data that we had and then we built the neural network for background removal. So we're not actually relying on Google, Amazon, or other providers. You're doing it all This yourself. allowed us to, yeah, exactly. So even, even if you, I don't know if you can zoom in on the picture, but this is a fluffy plush toy, right? Which is now, hard to... Which is very difficult, right? Yeah. In the same way how it's very difficult to like do background removal for animals or, you know, around the, the, the hair of, of people. Yeah. Um, it works, it works really well. <laughs> like it's super cool. you know because because we built it from pretty much from scratch so we made sure that these edge cases are by default handled uh in a nice way that's crazy cool. uh, so that's definitely one i've seen a, a lot of people use um there's an interesting workflow that people use there's um uh, if you scroll down there should be one called web purify so web purify is uh, hmm. you know detecting things like nudity and, and stuff sure. right um, so what you can do in Cloudinary as well, you can first of all say, you know, when you upload an image, run it through this moderation and make sure, and, and you can set up like a queue based system where you say, if this web purify moderation said this image is questionable, it will still upload it, but it will put it into a review queue so that mm. you can manually come in and say, that's actually, you know, okay, you know, that's yeah. not okay. And then, and then uh, those images will not show until someone has manually re reviewed them. That's cool. We had, we had a use case like that when I was at FedEx um, of like different types of odd packages. So we charge people for the specific type of package that they're shipping. And mm -hmm. a lot of times people lie. And so a big part of <laughs> revenue at FedEx is like either they said it weighed less than it actually does so we weigh it and then we charge them for the overage or they say it's a regular shape when it's really not regular so similar type thing not nudity but just like recognizing we had to do some like custom training to, to be able to recognize these things but recognize specific types of packages then need to get charged for a specific type of package okay. um, so similar type idea of it would also have especially during the training process like an approver would come and just kind of verify yeah that that is what what it thinks it is Okay. Yeah. So all these, you know, add-ons. Um, so I, I know that these two are used. I, I can't really tell you what, which ones are, you know, the, the most popular yeah. versus the least. Sure. Um, but still some but, good but stuff you know, nonetheless. There is OCR text detection. I, I use that. Um, you know, I mentioned the uh, license plate for mm -hmm. the car uh, to detecting that. And what I did actually was really cool. So in the UK, the the vehicle uh, registration agency has uh, sort of like an open database with an api where you can mm. send the license plate and they give you information about the car so what i oh, did wow. in the demo project was just upload an image of the car and sit back five the... seconds later boom car data yeah right and it's all based on ocr reading the text of the license plate sending that to uh the registration agency and then, and then them getting the json and then i display that I'm sure the I'm sure the police would appreciate that. <laughs> and you know what? Actually, I, I had a, a little police car and police sirens uh, rotating while I was uh, nice. while the, the actual application while was you're processing. running the demo. So yeah, that's cool. I had I had fun with that. Oh, that's it actually I mean, took me more time to create the siren in CSS than anything than, else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where that's where you got to have fun with with what you're doing. And that's why exactly. again, like so many different cool services out there just being able to play around with them and figure out what they do and, and get creative is the thing that I'm most excited about. Um, yeah. I actually have, I had this scheduled like yesterday, but I've or two days ago, but I've got a meeting coming up in seven minutes. That I need to get ready for um, any, let me know I in the need chat. To start my Friday evening, right? It's like yes. 8 PM soon. So. Yeah. It's late <laughs> for you. Yeah. Thanks for, this was a long stream. Thanks for hanging out and getting through no, the stuff fine. that we got through. Um, any questions uh, or last comments from people in the chat? Uh, let me know. You've got a minute or so. 
And then also um, want to make sure we show this again, jamstack.training, no.com for that one. And then also the full stack training.com. And then obviously people have seen uh, the Cloudinary website. We've been on that several times and linked to several pieces yep. of documentation. So just two, three more things um, yep. before we wrap up, if I may. So in Jumpstack, the training, uh, if you scroll down, so all of these courses are for free. They're all related to Jumpstack. And the uh, one of the courses here, which is titled, I think, Jumpstack and Serverless. So we talked about you know serverless and, and stuff. So there is a, a very interesting example that I, that I create as part of this course is how to sort of chain serverless calls. So I created a serverless function that hmm. basically accepts a search term on Unsplash. It searches a random image on Unsplash and then in the same serverless function takes that image from Unsplash and uploads it to Cloudinary. So basically you have an interface where you say, I need a random image of a cat so just type it in an input box, hit send, and then in like three seconds, you have a random image from Unsplash in your cloud, in your account. Of cool. Cat. Nice. And it's like just using, you know, serverless technology. So that's, you know, if people are interested in that, then please take a look at this. Um, second thing, um, we at Cloud, you have this program called the MDE program, which I think you will be part of soon. I'm hoping. That's the goal. <laughs> um, so if anyone is interested in, you know, media, developing media, working with images and videos and, and want to be connected with like-minded individuals, we have this program. Uh, so you can apply, you can join this community and, you know, talk about anything related to media that excites you. Uh, we do support you. You know, you can reach any cloud employee for questions and, and stuff. So feel free to check this out as well. And I also want to offer, I, I think, my Twitter handle was shared a few times. So if you have any questions about Cloudinary or anything, you know, hit me up on Twitter. Um, I think my DMs are, are open. Um, so that's my handle, T and then P-I-R-O-S. Guess I don't need so, all this extra tracking information. No, just you for the don't. URL. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so yeah, I'm, you know, any, oh, I, I have, oh, that's your Twitter. I thought I have messages. I'm like, what? <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, feel free to, you know, ask, ask anything. Uh, so yeah, definitely, uh, people follow up on that. Um, another, just my one plug is the course that I'm working on, which is react and serverless, uh, being able to basically do full stack web development, getting into a lot of the stuff that we talked about today with Netlify and serverless functions, that kind of stuff. And then I've got to figure out a way to incorporate Cloudinary and like future demos and courses, uh, just to show people how how easy it is to do some really cool stuff. Um, so yeah, thanks again for coming on. This was, this was exactly what I was hoping for. I feel ready to having... like go out and use it and get creative and hopefully have some stuff to share in the next like month or two demo and talk wise. Um, and then thanks everybody else that was here, uh, hung around with us for a long time, two hours. I think, uh, this is a, a long stream, but I think a really, really good one. So thanks everyone for being here and I'm going to go ahead and call it and I will, uh, see everyone later. Thanks again. Have a great weekend. Thank you.